is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So a while back, I ordered some Hall Sensing joysticks. These are actually meant for an Ambernick RG353M, but I ordered them as replacements from the Ambernick store, even though I don't have that device. And I also ordered some button mods from Sakura Retro Mod with the intention that I wanted to take both these button mods and these two hall sensor joysticks and I wanted to put them in my AYN Odin Pro. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to open up the Odin and how to replace these buttons and these joysticks. And what I intend to do is take this device that I already love and just make it slightly better. And this is actually a fairly easy mod, so hopefully this video will inspire you to do something similar with your device. So let's dive in and let's get to work. Now I had previously ordered from Sakura Retro Mod before and I had actually messed up the placement on my RG351V sticker when I was doing my video on how to do button and sticker mods for that device. Well Sakura Retro Mod saw the video and he actually sent me replacements at no cost to me. I didn't ask him to do it, nor did I request any type of refund or replacement. He just did it out of the goodness of his heart, and that just really impressed me. And now, if you take a look, I have a brand new sticker on this device, and he even sent me some stickers for my Miu Mini as well. So... I just wanted to point this out because he is a phenomenal businessman and a great person and if you're on the fence on buying from him I don't want you to have any fear or hesitation you will get amazing products and if anything goes wrong then they will make every effort to fix it. So Sakura Retromod, if you're watching this, props to you. And thank you very much as well for everything you do. Alright, with that out of the way, let's shut down our Odin and let's get this thing opened up. So these are Phillips screws on the back, so you just need to get your iFixit kit or your small screwdriver and it's pretty easy to just take these four screws out. Now let's go ahead and grab our guitar pick and let's start between the R1 button and the seam and we just need to carefully pry the back plate off. Now you'll notice here that it appears as though a screw is still in the Odin but in fact, I was able to actually unscrew it from the device. I just couldn't get the actual screw out for some reason. So you'll see when I actually do pry the back off, I can just take that screw out and everything looks pretty hunky-dory here. And this is the back of the unit. And you could see here that the joysticks are pretty easily accessible. We just need to go ahead and unplug the ribbon cable. And then let's start with the left joystick here because there are no buttons to replace. And let's just unscrew the two screws that hold it in place. And then we could gently pull the joystick out. And you could see a little bit of a subtle difference here between the two joysticks. In fact, the one that I'm using is a little bit bigger. So you do need to use a little bit of force to push the joystick back in. But it will go into place just fine and you will be able to reconnect it. 
Now, if you get the Gilly Kit Switch joysticks that are available on Amazon, those actually look exactly the same as the Odin joystick. So those won't give you as much resistance. And I'm gonna talk about the difference between those joysticks and the ones that I'm using here in this video a little bit later on. But for now, let's just go ahead and screw this joystick back into place using the same screws from the one we just took out. Now let's go ahead and carefully replace the ribbon cable. I'm using tweezers here in order to do that. Just go ahead and slide it into place and then make sure that when you are done that you close up the plastic latch. Now let's go ahead and remove the right joystick, same deal. Use the screwdriver to remove the same two screws and go ahead and unhook the ribbon cable as well. Just make sure you set aside those two screws for later. Now because we're also replacing the buttons, we need to actually remove this daughter board. And so in order to begin that process, we're going to first remove the R1 button and we're gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna go ahead and unhook two ribbon cables that connect this daughter board to the main motherboard. Now there are several screws that connect this daughter board to the device and unfortunately one of those screws is also attached to the shield on the back. So we're going to have to go ahead and remove this shield and thankfully it doesn't take much however you might find one of the screws hidden behind a warranty sticker. So let's just go ahead and let's take this off now that we've unscrewed everything. And you're going to see a lot here. You're going to see the fan. You're going to see a giant heat sink. You're going to see the motherboard underneath. My only concern here is taking this daughter board off now that we've disconnected it. And you're going to notice here that there is a very long speaker wire. That's okay, we could just kind of set this aside without disconnecting that wire. However, if you are not comfortable doing that, you can also disconnect the wire by where my right hand is. However, I don't find it necessary. We could just pop these buttons and the rubber membrane out and we can go ahead and put the new ones in. And you could see these new buttons actually follow the Xbox controller layout as opposed to the Switch controller layout. And I know that most people prefer to set their Odin in Xbox mode. So these buttons will kind of allay any of that confusion. So now let's go ahead and replace the rubber membrane. You can see there's a couple of guide pins to help you do that. And then once you've done that, we can put the daughter board right back on. Just make sure your buttons and your membrane are in place properly before you start closing everything up because you really don't want to have to go in and do this again. And you can kind of see here that I'm fumbling a little bit with getting this membrane in place. And I'm showing you this footage on purpose just to kind of show you that slow and steady wins the race. And you may have to apply or reapply a little bit, but once you've gotten it done and in place, you should be good to go. And it really isn't that hard. It just might take you a little bit of time. So now let's go ahead and let's replace the daughter board. 
And so at this point, it's just a matter of going backwards. We're going to set the board back in place, put the ribbon cables back together, and we're also going to put the joystick in and screw that back into place as well. So this is another situation where I'm going to tell you, take your time because you want to make sure a couple things are done here. You want to make sure that your speaker wire is realigned. You want to make sure that both of these ribbon cables that we took out before are put back in place. And we also want to make sure that we screw everything back in and put that shield back in place. Let's go ahead and put the R1 button back in place and now let's get our replacement joystick in. Now depending on the joystick you bought you might have a little bit of resistance here like with the ones that I purchased but again if you purchase the switch ones from Gilly Kit you should be fine. And then again let's screw the joystick back in place and also plug in the ribbon cable. And if all's well, we can go ahead and replace the back plate and the four Phillips screws that hold it in place. Just make sure before you screw everything in that you push the back plate down and you wait for that audible click to make sure that everything has been put back together the way it's supposed to be. Now we can turn it on calibrate the new joysticks and take this thing out for a test run. Now again, the joysticks that I'm using are originally for the Ambernic RG353M. And so after calibration, I went to check the dead zones. And I did notice with these specific joysticks, I wasn't able to get down to the absolute corners here of this square. I had to really push it to get to the bottom right and the top left. However, if I did go to test the gamepad buttons, I did seem to have the full range of motion here. So this may be a concern for some of you if you are using these specific hall sensing joysticks. But if we test the buttons here, everything seems to be working and seems to be very snappy and responsive. And now we have that nice little Xbox layout here. So let's translate this into some real life testing and we're gonna pick a joystick heavy game. And so we're going to use Super Mario 64 and we're going to test a couple of different things here. We're going to test range of motion with the joysticks. We're going to make sure that Mario can get up to full speed without me having to strain the joystick too hard. And we're also going to test the responsiveness of the button. So I'm gonna show a little bit of gameplay footage here, but you'll be able to see that despite what I showed you earlier on the calibration tool and the gamepad tester, 
I really didn't have any problems navigating this game in particular. Which is a good sign. It means that you'll be able to do these upgrades yourself and you won't be sacrificing anything. You'll just be gaining some new hall sensor joysticks and some nice face buttons. And here's just a short little bit of footage from Thwomp's Fortress just to show you that Mario is able to tiptoe here in order to take out these piranha plants. So you should be able to use the analog tilt and whatever else you need to do if you need to walk a little bit slower or any other applications that require the joystick to not be tilted all the way. And so that's it. If you've made these purchases and you've watched this tutorial video, hopefully this helped you to be able to install these button and joystick mods on your Odin device. Which overall, I have to say, I'm very happy I did because it took a device I already love and made it slightly better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that these modifications improve the Odin devices? And is this something that you intend to do or have already done? But that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to continue the conversation, you could find me hanging out in both the Steam Machine and the Retro Handheld Discord channels. Links to those channels will be in the video description. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.